Hi there, I'm Mary Susie from Beat Me A Story, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make these Celtic Labyrinth ring earrings. Um, you can see that I've done these in colors to make it a little easier for you to learn. This is an intermediate weave. Um, I do feel because I've done a video for you and we'll walk you through every step of the way that you're probably capable of doing a little bit more than you uh, could have if this was just a written tutorial. However, um, I would caution you that you should have completed a Byzantine at this point. To learn how to fold back some of these rings, um, you will learn by making a Byzantine weave, and that's definitely gonna benefit you. Just to show you a close-up of these, they're very lightweight, they don't weigh anything, fairly tiny, okay, so a lot of people enjoy wearing these, and of course you can change the colors to make these in uh, whatever colors you desire uh, once you uh, try this for the first time. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so since this is the uh, most beginner version of this, I'm going to take it a little bit slower and I'm going to um, be giving you um, sizes and colors. And I often teach things in colors to help you identify the materials and over time you kind of get to know the sizes, but um, for right now and for this lesson, we'll go through by color. So this is the gunmetal. It's a shiny gunmetal. And you'll notice that I opened my smallest one and my biggest one. And the middle size one, I went ahead and closed that. This is 16 gauge 5 16 This is uh, 16 gauge 3 8 And this one is actually 18 gauge 3 16 size. Okay, so I've opened these two. I'm gonna set those off to the side. I've gone ahead and this is the largest. These are all my 20 gauge, okay? This is the largest one that I have. And I went ahead and I closed all of these. Okay, so they'd be ready for me. And then this is the very smallest size. So these are 20 gauge 3 16 okay? Over here, I have 20 gauge 1 8 which is about two sizes down from the 3 16 And then the next size down from 1 8 is a 20 gauge 7 64 And I've gone ahead and opened those two. So the smallest two, are the ones that I've opened, the lime and the matte gun metal. Okay, and I'm gonna take the lime out of my way because I don't need it for this step. So for the first step, we're gonna need our violet rings. I'm going to use these open um, 20 gauge, 1 8 inch rings to attach my closed rings to this central closed ring. Okay, so this is very simple. Just gonna pick up a jump ring sure this is open enough to get around there okay so through the big ring pick up two and I'll close okay so now I'm going to need to do that a second time with these same rings okay so I'll just pass it through the two and through the one that's going to be the center oops sorry didn't open my rings quite enough to get around that big ring. Okay. So it looks like this. Okay. And that's in your tutorial. You'll see a picture where it looks just like this. Now, that's one spoke and we're going to need four spokes just like this. So I am going to pass through this center ring again. Pick up two of the violet rings. Close this jump ring. And pick up another one. Pass through the big one again. Then through the two violet that I just passed through. close now I'm going to do my third spoke so I'm going to pick up two of these again pass through the big ring and close 
interesting. Now you got me looking for ones that are open a little bit more than other ones since I had that problem. Because I, th I do think it's easier to go through the outside ones and then come through that inside one. But you had me doing it the other way because I had some rings that weren't quite open enough. Not a big deal. Okay, and this is my last one. But I'm gonna start, see how each of these have two rings, attaching those two rings to the outside. Okay, this is my last one. I'm gonna close that. And you'll see why we need two. It's actually very important that we have two rings connecting this this time. Um, because we're going to flow into something that's kind of like um, a Byzantine next. And in order to do that, uh, you need two rings to create that formation. Darn, well, I'll learn next time. I'll open my rings up just a little bit more. Sorry about that. But that's okay. We're going to get through it. Okay. So now you see I just have a center ring. Let me see if I can get all the spokes hanging to the outside. So you see I have one, two, three, four spokes. So two of the mag gun metal are attaching to the center ring, which is the 16 gauge 5 16 and they also connect to the violet rings, which are 20 gauge 3 16 in this particular project. Just so you know, um, the other projects that I've done um, during this circuit of pro projects, um, they all use slightly different sizes of jump rings, so um, this is not necessarily universal works great for this pair of earrings though. And um, you'll see that these sizes work great with a central ring of, um, of 16 gauge 5 16 which is why we're using it now. Okay, so I was talking before about the fact that we need two rings because this is kind of like a Byzantine. So if you've done a Byzantine before, you know that um, what you do is you let your rings slide backwards, okay? So one flop to this side, one's flopping over to this side. I'm gonna kind of squeeze these up top and see how these are coming to the outside. These are making a V now, these ones that were connecting it. And now I can access these violet rings um, in the center. So I'm kind of splitting the two, the two matte gunmetal rings and I'm passing around the two violet rings and see how they're kind of folded back and create this formation. Okay, so we're gonna to wanna to do that with all four of our spokes now. And again, because this is sort of like a Byzantine formation that we're working with, although it's gonna change at the end of this step, but we want two rings, okay? Right now we're doing Byzantines, but in a minute, this is gonna turn into Celtic Labyrinth, okay? Okay, so now I have all my uh, four little Byzantine pieces in place and you can see each of these pairs of violet has one, two, three, four matte gunmetal jump rings. And you can see that there's a violet underneath and a violet up top on each of these uh, pairings that I have. Okay, and what, are we, what we're going to do now is we're going to connect these spokes together. So I'm going to use two jump rings from this side of this violet pair of jump rings and I'm going to gather them together with two, with the two that are the most inside, okay, with these two jump rings, okay? And I'm going to use my lime jump rings, which are already open, to do that. And notice I pick up with my thumb, I support with my middle finger from behind, make sure my work is supported so that I can go down and through and then come back out the other side. Supporting your work properly with your left hand is really important when you start doing chain mail. Especially, um, you know, this is kind of a loose pattern, so it becomes really important and essential. Okay, see those four there that we gathered together using our lime ring, okay? Now I'm gonna do a second lime ring in the same place. I just like to fill the form a little bit better and make my piece a little bit sturdier. A lot of times when you're using pairs of jump rings in a pattern, even when you in places where you don't need to, 
it's good to use too because it just fills the form better and makes um, makes the shape more consistent throughout. Okay, so I got those two. I got these two. Okay, see we've got another spoke. Another two spokes coming together. And these are actually going to become the corners of our square or our diamond shape. I think this can be referred to as a diamond, but in this particular case, we're going to refer to it as a square because that's how we're going to use it. Okay, two more line. Come around to the next corner. See, I'm gathering up those two. And the two next to it. So I'll have four gun metals being gathered up at each of these locations that I'm gathering up with my lime jump rings. Okay, one, two, three, four. go and just two more to go and then we'll be almost ready to finish this guy okay so one two three and get on over there and four okay close that One, two, three, four. Okay, that's my final lime jump ring. And I'll, I'll probably go back when I'm off camera and fix um, some of these. You know, you can see this isn't a perfect closure. I'll go ahead and fix these once I'm off camera and make it a little bit better. It's hard to do perfect closures in a video. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to take our biggest ring. This is already pre-opened for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up through, I'm going to go up through this matte titanium ring. And at the same time, I'm going in between these two violet rings. And then I'm going to come back down out of this matte uh, gunmetal ring. Sorry, I think I said titanium. It, these were called uh, matte titanium, but I, I found that it caused too much confusion. So I'm going with matte gunmetal from now on so that uh, people don't think this is t the titanium material. Okay, so see how I got in between there? Can you see how I'm splitting those two violet rings? Okay, and then I just have to find my way out the other matte gun metal ring on the other side. And you can see that below really well. Okay. All right, I want to close this ring. Now I want to make sure when I close this ring that this one's real pretty, that the closure is as tight and as perfect as I can get it because this is a big ring and it's really going to show if it's not. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck that ring closure inside. Now that can move around, but for now, okay. So you see we have a ring inside our square and then we have a ring drop coming down off of our square on the bottom. Now at the top, I'm gonna to do the exact same thing, okay? I wanna come down into this first matte titanium. I'm sorry, matte gunmetal that's on the bottom. Now that I've talked about it, I'm gonna keep calling it the wrong thing. Okay. Might take a little bit of fiddling to do this. Okay, there we go. Once you get it through though, it's usually real easy to get it through this other side ring, okay? You see that? Pull this up a little bit further so you can see that it went through those two matte gun metals and it's also splitting between the two violet rings. Okay, and then I'm just going to grab my um, ear wire and we're going to close this one as nicely as we possibly can. Okay, and voila, beautiful pair of earrings. So, as I said, um, you know, doing this in uh, multiple colors. 
um, I wanted to do a video for you that really was um, ideal for a beginner to learn with and to learn with colors so you could really see the difference. And as you go forward with chain mail, you'll learn the sizes a little bit better. But um, I do have all sorts of uh, free tutorials on YouTube, so please be sure to like and follow me there. And uh, this kit and video are were available at BeMeAStory.com, and we have lots of other projects for you. Thanks so much.